Guys, I'm Miss Fancy. You guys know I'm a special education teacher here. I know some of you guys. Um, I'm actually getting my master's degree, and she's back there making gears at me, so I'm going to speak up. I'm Ms. Fansler, and I am a special education teacher here at Brown Middle School, and I'm getting my master's degree in library science, and Ms. Garner has been kind enough to let me teach with you guys. Um, so you guys have been studying the Renaissance, right? You started yesterday. What can you tell me about it? What have you learned so far? Right here, blue shirt. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, you know anything about him? Yeah. Okay, we can do a lot of things. It was like a rebirth to France where they started to lean more towards art and religion and all that. All right, okay. Anybody else? That's pretty good, though. Do you guys remember where the Renaissance got its start? Uh, it was in that area. Where was he born, Leonardo? Oh, is he talking about Europe. Europe. This was Europe, but also, thank you. Try here, blue. Francisco. <laughs> Look at your right here, Florence. Florence. There we go. Florence in Italy. So yes, and you, as you've noticed, I have Italy up here. I have it up here for a reason. Italy was kind of cool. Um, what does this land form that Italy is? It sticks out in the ocean and starts with B. Just say it. Peninsula. Peninsula. Okay. So um, up here, up north of Italy, that's Europe. Over here to the east of Italy, that's the Middle East. And down below, you can't really see it. That's Africa. So Italy's kind of right in the middle of all those places. And that made it a great center for trading. Let me flip back to my PowerPoint. Like, don't worry, Tim Lane has three slides. It's not going to be through great. Okay. Um, so the Italian city states were a natural crossroads between Europe and the Middle East and Africa. They became a trading center, and because they're trading goods, they also started trading ideas. And that's where you get the Renaissance spreading from Florence to other parts of Italy. Okay. And you guys know you have on your tables the names of some cities. What have you guys got? Just say it. Rome. Rome. We got Venice. Venice. Milan. Florence. Oh, I got Milan. 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 What you guys got back there? Naples. Naples. Okay, those are the five biggest ones. There were actually a whole bunch of them. We're not going to get into all of those. So what you guys are going to do in just a minute is you're going to make a promotional poster for your city state. You're going to talk about the type of government. <coughs> this is kind of important if you're thinking about moving there because some of them have very restrictive governments and some of them are a little more you know, free. The type of leadership, these, sometimes these different city states had different leaders. You're going to talk about who leads it. Any famous people who came from or worked in your city, some of these Renaissance painters moved around. So our guy Leonardo, he moved around a lot. Any famous works of art or architecture from your city state? Ms. Um, Warner, can you show us a couple of those top? Yes, I would like for everybody to look at her when she's giving directions, okay? Y'all in the back? Important. Okay, she's going to show you a few examples of that. Real quick. It's pretty simple. About four facts. You need your name on there pretty big because you're promoting your city. You also want to try to get some artwork in, and that's where we're going to get to our next steps. On your tables, you have a piece of paper, and it says group roles. Fun line. Here go. So you need to choose a timekeeper. Miss Barner, when do we need to be out of here? Two o'clock, three o'clock, Um, Yeah, three o'clock at the latest. Okay, we need to be done at three o'clock at the latest. That's not a lot of time, guys. So the timekeeper's going to kind of keep an eye and go, hey, hurry up, hurry up. So there's a clock right here, clock right here. You guys know three o'clock, right? Oh, yeah. Good. The recorder. This person records the group's findings on the poster. This is when you have to have good handwriting. To pick somebody who has some handwriting, they can write your facts down for it. The artist creates artwork to liven up the group's poster. Stick figures are just fine. I'm good with stick figures. Do what you can. Runner doesn't literally run, okay? The runner gets supplies from the group, which are over here, which you'll do in just a few minutes, and gets help from teachers if you guys can't get our attention by raising your hand. The reporter, <coughs> this job will actually come into play tomorrow because we're really not going to have time, we found, to um, talk about what we do. But you've got to be able to read your poster off the class. That's a job for tomorrow. The researcher. Everybody's a researcher. If you have enough people, you can have a head researcher. What you guys have got on your tables, or should have, I don't see them here, I'll get you some, is some notebook paper. What you can do is write down a couple of facts when you do your research and hand that to your recorder. Your recorder can then write it down more easily than if you're sitting there trying to tell them about it. And we found that makes it go a little bit quicker. All right, in front of you, you have laptops. You need to go ahead and sign in. You pass Lee Scaler. This is the site you're going to. Yes, it is a bear to get in there. No, I've got to type in exactly what she's got. Okay? In life.
might be fine. You've got to go to stupid URLs that have a lot of crazy letters and numbers. This will just give you some practice. Okay, good. Who's the skiller first? Yes, a lot. Raise your hand. You have a hard time with me. Some people go straight through it. Some people fight. Oh.